Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our weekly Q&A call. This is going down big. It's speaker focused platform. I am the world's number one speaker coach, Kevin T. Robertson, on the world's number one platform for speaker marketing. Again, welcome. You know what the rules are. If you have a question, use the raise hand feature. And also, we will unmute you if you have something to say. We're going to talk today about the mind of the conference coordinator meeting an event planner. How do they think and what are they looking for when they want to hire a professional speaker? Let me say it again. You need to gather around the fireplace, get the kids together. For the ones you want to pass the torch on to, you need to listen to me today because I've dealt with thousands of conference coordinators in my 34 year career. I know what they're looking for to book a speaker. I know what they're looking for when they want to hire you. I know what kind of sales tools you're going to need. I know what kind of mindset you need to have. I know how they think in every single way. I know what they're talking about when they're in the conference planning period. I know when they like you, when they don't like you. So I suggest you listen to me. Gather around platform for speaker focus, because here I go. It's the mind of the conference coordinator. How do they think? What are they thinking about when they want to hire a professional speaker? So here we go. Here's what I've learned over my 34-year career. First of all, let's talk about the study of the human mind. If you do not have these books, I highly recommend that you go cop them whenever you're on some downtime around building your speaker business. One of them is called How the Mind Works by Steven Pinker, P-I-N-K-E-R. It's about this thick. It is a long read. It's like a research book, but it will explain to you how the brain is broken down and what every region is responsible for. It will tell you about things like uh, the area study that I have been extremely interested in for the past, I'm going to say maybe 30 years, is cognitive science. It's brain function. It's recall ability. Uh, they don't call me America's leading focus expert for nothing. You've seen me with many displays for my recall and my memory ability as I'm doing the trainings. How is it that I'm able to retain so much information, hold so much in? How is it that I'm able to transfer that knowledge at a very high level? It's all because I understand a part of the brain located at the back of the brain stem. It's called the RAS, Reticular Activating System. And inside the reticular activating system, you have things stored like your memory and your recall ability, all your database of knowledge. That's why when you, like you see a new Tesla and you're like, I've never seen that car before. What model is that? Somebody tells you it's a Tesla. All of a sudden, you start seeing Teslas everywhere. Now, the reason for that is because your brain has the ability to process millions and millions of auditory and visual thoughts per second. A computer, ha! a computer wishes it could process information as fast as a human brain. So the mind is nothing to play around with. It is exceptional. It is powerful. It is all about, ex it, it has expansive capabilities that you couldn't even possibly imagine. Your brain makes up about 2% of your entire body weight. We're only using about maybe seven to 15% of our mental capacity. At all times, we aren't even pushing our brain to the max and getting the most out of it. This is how powerful the human mind is. This is why you have to keep pouring into it and you need to understand how it works. Now, so I would say purchase Steven Pinker's book, How the Mind Works. He's a leading authority and he's a professor at MIT. I suggest you do that. Also, I suggest you study anything that has to do with cognitive science and brain function as it pertains to learning. Remember what I do when I facilitate, I use what I call participant-centered learning. Again, let me say it, do some research on this stuff. Participant-centered learning. It's very engaging, very interactive. So what I'm doing is I'm literally customizing my presentation. Oh, why am I telling you all of this? Because the conference coordinator loves people like me that's gonna deliver value and that understands all the learning styles in the audience. So I'm hitting everybody's learning style. I'm hitting the thinkers, the relators, the directors and the socializers. I make it fun for the socializers I'm not too strong, but I need to be authoritative when I have to be. For the directors, I provide great leadership because they aren't going to listen to you until you, you make them stand up at attention because you actually got to know what the hell you're talking about. I make it very detailed for the thinkers 
and then I use my heart and I'm very warm when I'm speaking to the relators. Now, these are things that you can find, by the way, because I put them in module one when it comes to the technical aspects of speaking, because it's, it's going to help your overall presentation. Now, I will tell you this, all of these things I'm sharing with you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you want to know how you get to number one. You have got to read a lot and forget the reading after you read. You got to go apply it. See, this is the reason why the greatest are the great, because it's not good enough for them to read it. I am very OCD. I don't know how to do it half-assed. I don't know how to do it a little bit. I'm going to go all the way in. It's just the nature of my personality. It's also one of the main reasons why I've been successful as a professional speaker, because it wasn't good enough for me to settle for mediocrity. It was not good enough for me to settle for not getting any bookings, sitting home broke with the empty calendar. It wasn't good enough for me when I was getting my entire ass handed to me in a hundred pieces, because this is what happens when you don't understand this business and it will deal with you if you don't deal with it. But if you want to be number one, I mean, if you're even remotely interested, I suggest you listen to me like you do each and every week. Because if you don't understand how the mind works, you're going to be in big trouble. Second thing I want you to really, really pick up is anything that has to do with studying consumer behavior. Let me say it again. You should be picking up as many books as possible to study consumer behavior. In specific, I would like for you to study the conference coordinator, meeting, and event planner. You should be reading articles that event planners write. You should be talking to conference coordinators. Even, and I know what you're saying right now. Oh, KTR, but I haven't started booking any speaking engagements. I need you to shut up and listen right now. I didn't say you had to start booking speaking engagements to speak to conference coordinators, did I? I don't care where you are, what level you're on in your career. Uh, let me put it to you in terms that you understand, because some of you have a problem with listening. So that I don't have a lot of friends. I don't care. I don't need them. All I need is Austin Troyer, and I will remain number one forever. Let's get that straight. I don't make new friends. I don't like you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't need any friends. I tell you who I do like. I like customers. I like conference. I love conference coordinators, meeting and event planners. See, I've got people that I would consider a business associate <laughs> to be people that I want to connect with, people that are interested in helping me grow my business, because I'm sure it's going to help them grow theirs. Are you starting to understand? Forget about your friends, your family members who are at the cookout telling you you're not going to be able to do it. They can't help you. This is why you signed up on the Speaker Focus platform, because we're it. When I tell you we're the world's number one platform for speaker marketing, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? The other, pla the other platform, these other people just flat out don't care. They're, they're having you chase your ass in circles. Now, if you think you're going to get there with this kind of game, uh, by all means, please share some links with me and Austin. We'd love to hear about it. We'd love to know who else actually gives a damn like we give a damn to help you understand the, forget about everything else right now that you're learning on the platform. I need you to forget about this. This is a critically important training for your career because some of you are still stuck in me mode. You're still stuck in I mode. You're still stuck about this is what you can do for me. Uh, the, uh, I used to sing the me, me, me song all the time. My marketing language is all about me, not the target buyer. Everything I was building for my speaking career, especially early on, remember, in the, I wasn't this professional. <laughs> the first seven years, seven of them, count them, the first seven years of my career in the speaking industry, I was just a motivational generalist. I would speak about anything. I was good at the hype part, nothing else. So I didn't understand that I was providing a service to someone else. <laughs> when I tell you I was in my own head, like a lot of you are right now, you need to stop. You need to get out of your own way. It's not about you. Remember, this business is about providing service to other people. The conference coordinator, 
Are you starting to understand? You hear the kind of vernacular that I'm using every single week? I have all kinds of different names. Let me explain. Forget about your friends. They can't help you. The conference coordinator can help you. You see, my friends and associates are, are target buyers, conference coordinators, meeting and event planners, key decision makers, committee members who are directly responsible for doing what? Purchasing professional speaker services. Those are the only people that's going to be able to help you. And you also got to stop talking to people that can't book you to speak. Why? What are you doing with your time? Why am I having a conversation with you if it's not helping my business do this? See, some of the conversations you're having, all it's doing is driving you into the ground. Or oh, a lot of you are hitting a, you hit a plateau years ago. Why? Because all you're doing is talk. Are you sick of talking about COVID-19? Because that's all everybody's talking about right now. I don't care. Put a mask on. Protect yourself. We've heard it a million times. You know what to do. Keep your ass in the house if you're that scared. But I tell you this, COVID is not stopping you from talking on the phone. COVID is not stopping you from reading articles about conference coordinators, meeting and event planners. You are not booking speaking engagements. And I know a lot of you still are working on your sales tools and you haven't finished sales cycle training, so you're not ready to even start talking to the target buyer. But I don't give a damn what stage you are. You better start understanding real quick that the most important people in your life, I know what you're talking about. Oh, KTR, nobody's more important than Jesus and God. Oh, did I say anything about that? I didn't say nothing about that. Okay? I'm not talking about your belief. And oh, oh now, now I'm gonna get some, <clears throat> I'm gonna get some um haters talking about, well, my family is the most important thing. My relationship is the most important thing. Okay, great. Well, guess what? You aren't gonna have a house, a family. You want to be in broke, begging, or desperation mode like I was? You want to damn near lose it all? Forget about the pain. I've been through 20 pandemics. You want to lose it all because you don't understand how to craft your marketing language to the target buyer so they can actually book you to speak? Your marketing materials need to look attractive. Forget about the way you look. I'm not talking about that. You better smarten up and listen to what I'm telling you because the conference coordinator is for real. These people are serious. Let me give you some statistics on the conference coordinator. They are in the top 10 when it comes to stress. Right up there with doctors, attorneys, uh, firefighters, police officers. The, the conference coordinator is in the top 10. Let me explain. Let me, let's get inside the mind of the conference coordinator. Oh, by, by all means, you can ask me as many questions as possible. You can ask me as many questions as you like tonight about the conference coordinator. Now, let's be clear about the conference coordinator. These people are not only are they in the top 10 when it comes to stress, they have 20 motivational speakers literally begging for speaking engagements. See, you don't think that I'm paying attention to your social media profiles. You don't think that I'm still seeing that a lot of you, because you're lazy, you still have the word motivational speaker in your titling to your LinkedIn profile, the titling to a lot of your social media. A lot of you still are, are you're still attached to a motivational speaker. Oh, I'm not gonna listen to KTR. I'm gonna keep the word, I'm gonna keep calling myself a motivational speaker. Great, good for you. But I tell you this, the conference coordinator, a real conference coordinator that's booking speakers on a $5,000 plus dollar level, <clears throat> excuse me, they get 20 motivational jack wagons giving them a call every single day. I'm going to do a, a training coming up of why motivational speakers is dead, because a lot of you still aren't listening to me. And I, I have to burst bubbles every day as I'm doing my strategy calls. So conference coordinators, what they're looking for in booking a speaker, I'll get to that in a little bit but I want to help you understand how they think. So I'm a conference coordinator. Watch this. Motivational speaker, conference coordinator. Watch this. Watch this role play real quick. Hey, hey, this is a oh, motivational speaker, by the way, is going first. Hey, they're not asking first, like I teach you in sales cycle training, offering the value first and asking them, do they have a couple minutes to speak? 
or whether whether or not you're doing outbound strategy or inbound strategy, eventually you have to get on the phone with the target buyer. So what am I telling you? This is what the conference coordinator has to deal with every single day. It's like swatting flies at a cookout. Motivational speakers are pesky. They're irritants. They're unprofessional, they're unorganized, and they're all over the place. I've seen many of you had the motivational speaker, me, 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 me mindset before you came on this platform. I'm so proud of the ones who are growing. And I'm so proud of the ones who know that they are a professional speaker now. You didn't look like that before you came into this coaching program, did you? Okay, now let me go back to my role play. Mr. or Mrs. Motivational Speaker that's on the phone. Remember, Motivational Speaker's dead. This is what you don't wanna do. This is what the conference coordinator hears 20 plus times a day. Hey, hey, this is a, hey, hey, this is a Mr. Motivational Speaker. And listen, listen, I, I, I know you got a conference coming up. Uh, this is the reason why you should hire me. Let me tell you my story. Well, listen, first of all, I was raised on a farm and you know, hey, I've been motivating people all my life and I've been inspiring people and but that shit that you hear on the Charlie Brown, that little noise that they make when they talk to each other, that's what the conference coordinator hears when you're talking fast, you're unorganized, you go in right for the kill which is what I clearly tell you not to do right there in module number two, and you don't offer any value. But this is what the conference coordinator is doing the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, you, you, say, oh, you say your motivations. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, oh, oh, hold on, oh, listen, listen. First of all, you're talking too fast. Uh, oh, oh, what, what do you do? Uh, yeah, yeah, listen, I, I'm a motivational speaker. Listen, I know you got a conference coming up and I, I'm telling you, you should hire me. Oh, oh, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, slow down, wait. We already have all of our speakers for this year's conference. What, what's your topics? What do you speak about? They're going to let it go on so they can embarrass you, by the way, when you're talking fast and you're all over the place because you don't know how to manage the sales cycle from contact to close. They're going to let it go on. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, we, are, we already have all our speakers. Hey, listen, I'll I, I tell you what, tell you what. Why don't you send us an email? And it's right there on the website. Why don't you send us an email? And then we'll see if, if, if you have something to offer us that we like. And we'll contact you. Click. Or what they used to do to me. Remember, I'm very OCD. Right, before I learned all this self-discipline and emotional control, I used to really ride the conference coordinator. And let me tell you what I mean when I say ride them, which they hate. Don't do this. Don't keep calling the conference coordinator over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because what they're going to do is they're going to see your number and they're going to say, oh, that's that motivational jack wagon from Maryland. That's that motivational jack wagon from Ohio. Oh, that's the speaker that's calling me from California. Oh, I already know what he wants. He just wants, he doesn't have any value because he didn't have value when he actually got me on the phone. So they're gonna keep letting you call, making a fool of yourself. They're gonna let it dump off to the voicemail. And you're going to keep calling and calling because you don't have a proper customer relations management tool, your speaker business isn't automated, so you're going to stay in motivational purgatory, broke, begging, or desperation mode. You're gonna keep on running your mouth about motivational speaking and the conference coordinator simply doesn't wanna hear it. Uh, Tina Marie, okay, Tina Marie has some. Tina Marie says, oh, oh, I'm grateful that I found you gentlemen. Tina Marie, we are just as grateful and more proud. Your content looks amazing that you've been posting lately. Keep doing what you're doing. Tina Marie is another shining example of not having an organized message. And she has strong facilitation skills even before she came into the coaching program, but you should hear her messaging now. It's outstanding. Okay, I think that's Erica. Um, I'm new at this. Were you able to visit my post on school? Yes, yes, Erica. I was definitely able to visit your post on school. And I reply to it saying that you need to organize your signature programs and uh, wait i think uh galaxy tab a i believe that's i believe that's erica if i'm not mistaken troy i believe that's erica let me move on because i was on a roll excuse me for a second
Now, let me get back into what I was talking about. A real professional speaker, when they call the conference coordinator, when they actually connect with the conference coordinator, first of all, if the conference coordinator needs the service that you provide, you can better believe they're gonna to wanna to have a conversation with you. This is why I call it a value-based service offering. What are your, what's inside of your value proposition? A value-based service offering. So your value prop is going to be your signature programs. Let's understand, let's be very clear with each other like we always are. And for the people in the cheap seats that did not hear me, when I'm telling you that the only reason why the conference coordinator wants to talk to you is because they feel this is a mindset. They feel, <clears throat> excuse me, that you are the speaker that's going to give them the most value. You give them the speaker and it's your responsibility in your marketing tools to paint a picture for them to let them know why you are the male or female for the job. If a speaker's booking 25 to 50 tour days every year, it's like doing 50, 25 to 50 job interviews. <laughs> yeah, I know in, in the nine to five world, people turn over their job every three to five years. I believe it's now every two to four years, they're turning over their job. So you only have to do a job interview every couple of years. Let's round it off and say, you only have to do a job interview every, let's say every two years or three years. Okay, good for you. You got another three years to get ready for the job interview. If you're booking 25 engagements a year, that's basically two engagements a month. You gotta talk to the target buyer. If you're like me, <clears throat> at the height of my career, I was booking 150 tour days a year. I was going hard. So I was talking to conference coordinators all the time. Whether or not, we're not, oh, which, you don't, did I tell you this? Yeah, the 2,750, tour days that I got paid to be a speaker. We're not talking about all the times I got told no. You know why? Because I didn't understand the target buyer. A lot of times I push myself out of the speaking engagement because I didn't understand how the target buyer thinks. So what are we talking about today? <clears throat> Excuse me. The mind of the conference coordinator, meeting and event planner, key committee member, the decision maker, how do they think and what actually prompts them to book you as a speaker? See, I don't know what, you, what you've been taught. I don't know what you know. I don't know what you believe. But I'm telling you right now, you want to listen to me because I've been slapped around by these conference coordinators. I didn't know any better. And when you don't know better, let me tell you something. My mother used to say a hard head makes a soft ass. You could not listen to me if you don't want to. Oh, you could try to reinvent the wheel and do it your own way. Have at it, fine. I'm telling you that whatever you see me and Austin doing, you need to be trying to execute it. Whatever you, whatever, you, whatever you hear me, I'm not trying to boss you. I'm making respectful requests, but damn it, do it. Follow the formula the exact way I'm telling it to you because it will give you the best chance at talking to the conference coordinator. Let me tell you some of the other, other things that you have to watch out for conference coordinators. Uh, did I tell you you don't have any friends? Forget about being friends with these other speakers, okay? Because <laughs> you think you're gonna be buddy-buddy with other speakers and sit in the room with them and they're gonna start telling you how to book speaking again? They're not gonna tell you shit. They're gonna leave you hanging high and dry. This is why we created this pro program. Okay, for all of you who are in Toastmasters, good for you. But what are you gonna find out? Listen to me. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you about these other speakers because these other speakers are not the conference coordinator. They're not the meeting planner, okay? These other speakers, especially motivational speakers, they talk too much. Motivational speakers talk too much. Professional speakers let the sales tools do the talking for them. So for all of you who are members of NSA, great for you. I hope your membership fees, I hope you're getting your money's worth every single year. And for everybody who's at Toastmasters, I hope the same for you. And it's nothing wrong with getting in a form where you can practice. But here's what you're gonna find out. And when you're in a room full of other speakers, you're gonna find out what I'm talking about. When I'm in a room with other speakers, this is what I've always done in my career. 
it sickens me to my stomach when I'm in a room with other speakers because everybody's trying to out talk each other. So I just sit back and do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mind you, the majority of the conversations that you have when speakers do a round table, especially, I'm not talking about professional speakers, high paid speakers, the lower level speakers, all they're talking about, they don't know anything about marketing. They're just chasing their ass, spinning wheels. That's all you see is a lot of frivolous activity. They fizzle out like sparklers at the 4th of July. They sound really good. They flash and they look really pretty for a second. And all of a sudden, come to, a, come to a stop. Your little marketing knowledge is over real quick. So why am I telling you this? Because speakers, <laughs> speakers think they're know-it-alls. This is an industry where you can very easily fall into a category where you talk to people in a condescending way because you have so much knowledge. You're, especially your, a lot of you have had a track record in your industry for 15, 20, 30. We have people in our coaching program that have 40 years worth of experience. I'm almost there. I've, I've, been, I've been a speaker since I've been 18 years old. That's a long time. So I've seen it all and I've heard it all. Now, I leave myself open every once in a while. Somebody shocks me with something new. But believe me, when I tell you I've been around the block and my eyes have seen a lot, I'm telling you that speakers are not who you need to be learning from. No, no I'm, not, I'm talking about speakers who are at the same level as you, who you can't get any knowledge from. You got to get with a person who's, who's had some seasoning. You got to get around a person who's, who had the knowledge has been marinating for years. You know, the longer you leave it, the longer you let it marinate, the, the, the better it's going to taste. Okay? They say, they say you age. You, some, some, some speakers have really taken it serious. That's why now at this stage in the game, I'm a speaker coach. Aging like fine wine. You know why I know what I'm talking about? Because I made all the mistakes. Now, let me share some other things with you that conference coordinators meeting and event plans. Let me tell you what they do. At the end of the day, this is sales. Make no mistake about it. You are selling a brand. You are positioning a brand. You are presenting a brand. Your brand should display the biggest social proof. Social media should be called social proof. Because the conference coordinator, again, the, the mindset, how do they think? They're thinking, why should I trust you? Ha! Yeah. The conference coordinator is looking at your little raggedy speaker business right now. Why should I trust you? And it doesn't have to remain raggedy, but I have to speak to you like this so you understand what I'm talking about. A lot of you still got the word motivational speaker up there in your social media. You need to clean it up. Remove the word inspirational or motivational speaker from your marketing materials. If you still got it in there, that means you're still interested in attracting low fee speaking engagements. Low fee or no fee, zero to $1,000, or you're just a better motivational jack wagon at $1,000 to $3,500. A real conference coordinator is not going to take you serious until you start, start charging at least 5K, period. Not a real one. Oh, there's conference coordinators out there who want to hire motivational speakers. There's conference coordinators, they just want to get somebody in there and don't really want to move the meter. They just want to provide a little hype. And the youth market is famous for that. The youth market speaking to kids you believe when I was at the youth market, I had a great time speaking to kids. It was all fun and we it was all hypey. I used to do a little rap for them and everything, right? But I wanted to get to the bigger yams, the greenbacks, the dineros, the webbacks, the dinas. I want my euros. I'm international. I'm sorry. When I talk about money, I've seen currency all over the world. I want to get to the real money. I don't want that little bullshit $500 check you're trying to give me all the time. You want to get that? Stay in the zero to $1,000 category. A real conference coordinator is a professional. Just like you're a professional speaker, they're a professional coordinator. Do you know what it takes to be in the meeting and event planning industry? You know the kind of detail and organizational skills, exceptional organizational skills that you have to have. So when the conference coordinator talks to you, 
and your speaker brand, I suggest you be as ready and prepared as possible. See, this is what the speaker focus platform is all about. We get you ready to talk to the conference coordinator. I know a lot of you, you, you came into the coaching program thinking you were ready. Good for you. Well, you start coming into some harsh realities that you've got to be ready to talk to the target buyer first. That's why we have you get together your sales tools. That's why we have you show the social proof. That's why we take you through technical, the technical aspect of speaking, the art and science behind delivering the message. A lot of you still have not uploaded your videos and I know who you are. You owe me some homework assignments. You think I forgot? I'm America's leading focus expert. Also, we show you how to manage the sales cycle from contact to close. If you've graduated sales cycle training, especially a lot of you from the old one-on-one -on -one coaching program, <laughs> I, you, you had to role play with me and you had to get past me. You know why? Because I rush you. Let me, let me give you some of the characteristics of the target buyer. If you can't get their attention in the first five to 10 seconds, you're done. So they want to hear value because they hear so much begging all day long. They want some value. Conference coordinators are also, they know how to negotiate. <laughs> and guess what? If they know how to negotiate better than you, you're going to get a lower fee. By the way, uh, in module number six, there is a speaker negotiating menu in case you don't get 5,000. They offer you 4,500. You still got to get some ROI back on that $500 that you lost. And we are not walking away. We're not walking away from uh, $4,500. We're not going to do it. Now, all I'm telling you is that these characteristics of the target buyers, perhaps you should write some of them down. They are shrewd negotiators, especially the ones who really know how. Now, watch this. They're shrewd negotiators because they have to, they have a big budget that they have to manage. And uh, the, the biggest conference I've ever done was the International Association of Venue Managers Conference back in 2012, I believe it was, right around the time I did Heinz Field, Pittsburgh Steelers. I was on fire back then. And I was one of 55 speakers at one conference. One conference. It was a huge conference. All of the Sky Suite directors and all of the venue managers for every major venue in the world, from Jerry World to Wembley Stadium to the Verizon Center, uh, all of it. All of them belong to this association. It was huge. They brought me in to do a keynote, and then I did a breakout session right after the keynote, hopped back on the plane, flew right back home. Now, I'm telling you that some characteristics of conference coordinators is that they're, they're very, uh, they're great negotiators, especially the ones on the, that, that do it professionally. They really have an idea. They know how to engage a speaker. This is why we have the speaker information booking packet has everything in there to book you logistically from top to bottom. Look at speaker focus like this. Look at the speaker focus platform. Look at all of your video and audio modules like this. Look at the private coaching group. Look at the access to me and Austin like this. We're giving you the answers to the test. It's never been done before in the history of the speaker business. Are we proud? Yes. Can anybody else do anything about it? No, we're number one. That's the way it goes. Get used to it, learn to love it. Now, some other characteristics about the target buyer. Ha, like sales and anything else in sales, some of them are liars. Let me say it again for the people that didn't hear me. Get out of your feelings for a second and understand that they're gonna, the conference coordinator is gonna crumple up your little emotions. They're gonna twist up your heart they're going to kick you, they're going to beat you up, and they're going to try to bulldog you. They're going to try to intimidate you. Yes, the conference coordinator is going to know a lot of times that you are not ready. And they don't want to deal with you when you're not ready. They want to deal with the professional of the first order. Remember, I'm a conference coordinator. Okay, look, I'm not KT. I'm not the speaker coach right now. I'm the conference coordinator. This is what I'm thinking about when, when 
I connect with the speaker. I don't know you. I don't trust you. Now you got to give me reason why I should trust you. And the only reason why they're going to trust you is through the sales tools and the social proof. They're going to put you under a microphone, a, a microscope, a magnifying glass. Are you going to be ready is the question. What am I talking about? They're going to click on every link that you have. Every single link. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to go and they're going to do a Google search on you. Then they're going to, they're going to go to your website, download the speaker info kit, download this uh click hit play on the speaker video demo now for those of you who have those sales tools right now and you finish with sales cycle training and you're ready to go to market good for you that means you should be you should be reaching out through linkedin doing doing whatever you can do every single day to get leads and fill up your crm customer relations management me and austin will be doing a training on the crm later down the line if you don't have one you should get one. We're going to recommend to you which one to get and how to manage it. So <clears throat> you're going to go in and start acquiring leads or adding those leads to your database, to your CRM. Now, remember when people opt in to your CRM, that means they now have given you permission to send them email. And it won't go in the spam folder. So remember that conference coordinators are liars like everybody else. They're going to tell you know how many times. You know how many times I've heard this? Forget about the thousands of speaking engagements that I've booked. You know how many times I've been promised or told that I am the guy for the job and I still didn't get the job? This is why you've got to learn to build an automated marketing machine. Because if not, you're going to be hanging on a hope and a prayer. You remember the Bon Jovi song from the 80s? Yeah, you're going to be hanging on a hope and a prayer. And that is not a way you should be going about doing marketing at all. Why am I telling you this? Because the conference coordinator, they're talking to real speakers who are prepared and who know how to negotiate. I'm gonna do a training on negotiations later down the line as well. Because if you don't know how to do these things, see some, some speakers lose the engagement because they don't know how to negotiate effectively or they don't have the value. And these are all things that happen when you don't have any leverage. We're giving you all the answers to the test on the speaker focus platform. So when you start talk to this conference coordinator, it'll be like you're having a conversation with one of your boys hanging out over a drink, sitting down with one of your girlfriends talking about a uh, conversation about something fun. I have fun with these conference coordinators. Sales is fun for me because I understand the process. That's why we put the process inside of module number two. Managing the sales cycle is vitally important. Something else I want to talk to you about. Characteristics relating to the conference coordinator. <clears throat> Excuse me. I threw my water down here. I threw my water on the floor when I got excited. <laughs> Some other characteristics. When I tell you that the conference coordinator is a liar, okay, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the ones who like to play games. And a lot of times, the reason why they do that, it's like, um, okay, I'm going to use a dating analogy so you can understand this. If a woman is interested in you, she's interested in you. And she's going to let you know that she's interested in you. I call it a woman has to give you permission to pursue. And you're going to know that by her body language. You're going to know that by her tonality of voice, her interests. Does she return your texts or your calls or whatever, whatever the case is? So the conference coordinator... It's just like a woman that you're trying to date. Now, I, I don't want, I'm using, a, I'm using a male because the male typically has to pursue the female. And, and this is, I'm, I'm old fashioned. So this is how typically how it works. And this is how it works with the conference coordinator. The conference coordinator is like, you're a guy and the conference coordinator is the female and you're in hot pursuit. Well, have they given you permission to pursue? That should be your question. <laughs> Do you look the part? See, women have these presets in their head. He has to be 6'2", he has to be dark skin, he has to drive a BMW. You know, all this other bullshit that, that, that society teaches them. The White House and the picket fence and the knight in shining armor. Okay, great. It, do, does your speaker business look like that? 
Because this is what the conference coordinator is thinking. <laughs> They're the knight in shining armor to put them in front of my target audience. They have the discipline. I trust them because I've looked at their website and they specialize in one thing, not 10 things looking like the Chinese food carryout store and you're in there selling chicken wings and fries and hamburgers, pizza, subs, and hot dogs. You're doing too much. The conference coordinator builds trust. When you specialize in one thing, remember leadership is the number one bookable and most requested topic at conferences and corporate meetings and events worldwide. I still do not see a lot of that reflecting in your marketing language as you're putting together your speaker info kit. And some of you are still not following the formula. Go back in school and get the, uh, the, speak, the signature program template and organize your signature programs the right way. If you send it to me through school and I review it and it's not structured the right way, I'm gonna send it back, scratch it up and tell you what you're doing wrong. Conference coordinators love organization, by the way. Organization is the foundational principle of success. What are we talking about today? The mind of the conference coordinator. What do they look for in speakers to hire them? Well, the conference coordinator, remember you, there's a trust issue now. So I, the next thing I need to see, do, I don't know you. I don't trust you. Remember, I'm not, talking, I'm not talking to you like the speaker coach right now. I'm the conference coordinator. I got my feet up under my desk right now. I'm laying back. You know what? The, I'm the conference coordinator. I hear, I'm sick of hearing BS. I'm looking for quality speakers to fill my roster for, I need somebody to do the opening keynote. I need somebody to do the breakout sessions. I need somebody to do a track session. I need about 10 speakers uh, for the different luncheons that we're gonna have all throughout. Uh, let's say uh, uh, Orlando Convention Center, one of the biggest in the world. Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, one of the biggest in the world. When you got these huge conventions coming in here, these things require speakers to be all over the complex. Or the conference coordinator may want to hire you for uh, an on-site strategic work session. <laughs> they may ask you to, do, to come back to, their, to do an on-site at their facility after the conference. They need speakers to fill in all these speaker slots. What am I telling you? is that I'm the conference coordinator. I need to build trust in you and I'm going to see that through your sales tools. Website with one call to action. Speaker video demo three to five minutes of one of your signature programs demonstrating your ability to speak. Are you putting your best foot forward on your speaker video demo? You should be, not for you, not for me, for the conference coordinator. Because I can pretty much understand how you manage your life just by looking at your social media. Do you understand that? That's how serious this is. Let me talk to you for a second. Let me get in here a little close so people aren't paying attention. I'm telling you that if I go to your social media right now, I guarantee you I can see how you're living your life just by your social media. Now, you're supposed to keep people guessing when you're managing your social media. You're not supposed to be putting out all your business about your relationship because the conference coordinator doesn't care. You and your little dumbass vacations that you're going to, the conference coordinator doesn't care. You hanging out with your friends with a red cup in your hand, turn up at the cookout, guess what? The conference coordinator doesn't care about that either. All the conference coordinator cares about is when I visit your social media, you want them to go, ooh, ah, and wow. You want them to get some sizzle. I'm hiring a leadership speaker. And what are they talking about on their social media, on their Facebook lives, on their YouTube channel? All their posts are centered around leadership. That's the person I want to do business with right there. I hear it every day. I hear it every single day from students that tell me, man, it's clear that you have dedicated your life to helping speakers grow their business. Go ahead, drop it in there right now. What, am, what do I talk about all the time? I don't care about anything else. This is my interest. It's my passion. It's my vision. It's the mission. It's what makes me fulfilled. You got to find out what makes you fulfilled. 
and do your damn job. Because the conference coordinator really needs you to. I mean, listen, everybody, they got a rough job. So if you're great at negotiating, if you're great at putting all the sales tools in front of them, oh, I forgot to tell you about the speaker info kit. Because when they're going through their, their planning period, when they're trying to decide the speakers that they want to hire, ha! and they're going to your website, and they, they, they don't see a speaker info kit. How are you supposed to put your name in the hat to be considered for the speaking engagement? You can't. This, let me say it so you really understand. This is the reason why speakers sit home broke with an empty calendar with no bookings in sight. Because you don't have all the sales tools that speaks to the target buyer in a language that they understand. Two things. Two things you should remember about the target buyer. Number one, you've got to teach them how to give you money. You've got to teach the target buyer how to give you money. And then you got to make it easy for them to do business with you. Well, if you don't have, again, I'm not the speaker coach right now. I'm the, I'm the conference coordinator. I'm the one with the money in my hand. And I want to pay you. I want to give you this money. You're asking me as a conference coordinator to separate me from my money. By the way, did my association or my corporation or my university or my school or my institution, whatever it is, is funny about cutting them checks. You think it's easy for them to cut you a check? Yeah, okay. Professional speaking, this industry, this is the hardest, easiest money you ever make in your life. Before you get rewarded with the privilege this ain't no, they ain't gonna, they're not giving away no high paying speaking engagements. This is an earned privilege. You don't get that privilege unless you put the right things in front of me and I'm the conference coordinator. Uh, ask yourself the question, are you making it easy for me to do business with you? Are you teaching me, the conference coordinator, how to give you money? I don't know. Some of you still aren't thinking that way. Has it clicked? You have not crossed over from the other side. Some of you still stuck in motivational purgatory. Some of you still reading some shit that you heard out of a book because you think it's going to work or you heard somebody say it at one of your little Toastmasters meetings or one of uh, 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 NSA meeting. Or you've heard this from this speaker. Or you've heard that. Forget about them. It can't help you. Because <clears throat> if they did, you'd have a check in your hand for $5,000 plus. So marketing is always the biggest problem with growing any business. Me and Austin don't have a problem with acquiring leads. Never. Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google AdWords, YouTube pre-roll ads. You don't even, I know you've seen our YouTube pre-roll ad lately. Oh, it's catching on fire. And we're ready to do another video and make it better. And also LinkedIn organic outreach strategy. And any other platform that is going to make it easy for us to have leverage. See, we're teaching you how to have leverage. Not being broke, begging, and desperation mode the way I was for the first seven years of my career in the speaking industry. Conference coordinators will lie to you because they have options. Oh, yeah, you think you're the only speaker that they can hire. Is that right? No. They got to listen. Sometimes this is what they need to do. Sometimes they need to hire an illusionist, a band, a juggler, a clown, a spiritual advisor. Uh, they need to hire a firewalker, a, uh, you know, some type of magician, a hypnotist, an illusionist, and they hire speakers. In all these different categories, they need to hire leadership speakers, but, or they need to hire a specialty speaker. I've been to conferences before where before we started the conference, they brought in a health and fitness speaker. They had everybody getting up, stretching and all of that kind of stuff. Everybody had on suits, but they were trying to get everybody pumped up, had the blood going and, and the speaker. I've seen some really great speakers in the health and wellness category. You know, what, speakers are bought in at different times for different reasons. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're going to be, if you're the keynote, that means that you are, the star of the show. So you got to understand that 
the conference coordinator, on one hand, the conference coordinator has a lot of selections. So there's something I want you to remember called market differentiation. Market differentiation. The real question is, let me get up close so you can hear this. <clears throat> the real question is, what are you doing in, to build your brand so that you are different from everybody else? I mean, all you got to do is just take a look. See, a lot of you, let's just start with your physical appearance. Because this is the reason why the universe created us very uniquely. We are uniquely and specifically designed to be different. You got to come into your own and know who you are as a speaker, as a professional, as a, as a, as an entrepreneur. And that is going to allow you to stand out in the marketplace. What really makes you stand out in today's marketplace? Cause there's so much bullshit in the market. It's easier to stand out now than ever before. All you got to do is provide the value. Remember, give the value first, show the value in your sales tools. Speaker info kit, speaker video demo, website. Make it easy for the target buyer to do business with you. Teach them how to give you money. Learn how to manage the sales cycle from contact to close. Run through the entire process. Connect with conference coordinators, meeting and event planners, and stop making friends at these dumbass networking events. They can't help you. You know how many networking events that I've gone to? And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to tell everybody I'm a motivational speaker. See, this is when I was still in motivational purgatory and broke begging and desperation mode. I'm going to tell everybody at this networking event that I'm a motivational speaker and I'm going to get bookings. Ha! Good luck with that. They don't care. The only thing, let me tell you something about people. They'll laugh in your face. In the back of their mind, they're saying, he talks too much. She talks too much. And then what they're going to say is, I don't even know why they wasted my time telling me any of that. Because I can't help them book them to speak anyway. Or this is what you're going to hear. You're going to hear a lot of this. See, th this is when you know your marketing is weak. They're going to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to pass along your information to somebody else. Oh, my job brings in speakers all the time. Lies, 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 lies. People that can't do anything for you, they had no intention on doing anything for you from the beginning. But when you're stuck in broke, begging in desperation mode, you actually believe this shit. Oh, I used to, oh, they used to have me, oh, they used to get me good. And you walk away from the networking event, you feeling so powerful. You feel so strong because you handed out your little raggedy ass business card that you felt proud that you printed up. No one cares. And it wasn't one freaking conference coordinator in there that you could talk to. Because you probably didn't have your sales tools together. All the information that we have on the speaker focus platform, you didn't know any of that. See, we're trying to take away the pain. We're trying to eliminate the steps that you don't know anyway to give you the tools so you can prepare yourself to speak to the target buyer. Now, eh, do I talk a little rough sometimes and it's a little hard to listen to? Absolutely. You should feel uncomfortable. I hope you do. Isn't that why you pay me money so I can hold your ass accountable? Or do you want to be in La La Land? You will all oh, <laughs> welcome to Fantasy Island. <laughs> a lot of you are still, you're out there with Mr. Rock and Tattoo on Fantasy Island. Yeah, so for some of you younger people, Google it. Troy, he probably don't know what Fantasy Island is, but I tell you this, it's you're stuck in the Bermuda Triangle, the Speaker Bermuda Triangle, the Twilight Zone. You know what happens in the Twilight Zone in the Bermuda Triangle? Some bad shit goes on. And you want to you be in a tailspin with your speaker goals. Just do everything opposite of what I'm telling you to do on these calls. Go ahead. Go ahead. Some of you are still stuck in your own mind. You want to reinvent the wheel. You want to do it your own way. Fine. Somebody has a question. That's right, Erica. The truth is the only way. It should feel uncomfortable when I'm talking to you sometimes because some of you aren't getting the work done. That's why you feel uncomfortable. Excuse me for a second, please. 
one of the prices you pay when you have to talk all day and you have leads coming out of your ears. <clears throat> and this is what we're trying to teach you how to do as well. I hope that your voice gets tired. I get tired of talking. After the Zoom call today, I don't want anybody to call me. Troy, if you try to call me after the Zoom call, I am not going to, I don't even want to talk to you. Do you hear me? <laughs> I love her. Troy, you know, I drop anything I'm doing to talk to you, bro, because you already know we're going to get these ads cranked up on a whole other level. Now, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, for those of you in my listening audience, and for those of you, <clears throat> excuse me, who are going to catch it on the rebroadcast. This, I'm talking from pain. I know what I'm talking about because I've serviced thousands of conference coordinators. Let me go into another mode. <clears throat> Remember when I said the conference coordinators are liars? It, listen, everybody lies when they have to protect their position. And the conference coordinator is no different because they got other options. Remember the market differentiation? Before I move on to tell you some other characteristics, of conference coordinators. Let me share, excuse me, let me share this with you. So understand this. Remember that the conference coordinator does have other choices. Obviously, they have other options. But let me explain something to you about the top 20% of speakers in this industry. Those are the ones that get the lion's share. Those are the ones with excellent high-level marketing strategies, what we are teaching you on the Speaker Focus platform. Those are the ones that always get the higher bookings. There's a lot of money that's still spent, but I mean, conference coordinators' budgets are huge. Remember, we do 5,200 plus meetings in our industry every single day. And because of COVID-19, now other platforms are being utilized and speakers still have got to, got to take their service offering or their mode of delivery, what I call it. You can still take your keynotes online, your educational keynotes, uh, remember, uh, keynotes are about an hour. Educational keynotes are about two hours. Half-day programs are about two to four hours. Full-day programs are about four to eight hours in length. And then you're talking about a keynote speech, an educational keynote, a breakout, a track session, a on-site strategic work session, which is like a focus group. Then you have an exec executive coaching. Then you have on-site training. And you also, um, you also can do retreats and many other things as well. These are all modes of delivery. Your content, your curriculum that you're going to be delivering, it just expanded. It just got bigger. So conference coordinators, yes, they have a lot of choices. But here's what they don't have. And I want you to understand this. Just like I'm the world's number one speaker coach, and the only way you're going to get this information is out of this mouth. The way I say it, the way I deliver it, the way Austin manages the technology, you, you can't get that anywhere else in the world, period. I didn't say anybody else knows how to do it, but they don't know how to do it at this level. This is called market differentiation. So what you want to do is you want to put the target buyer in a very difficult position to tell you no. And that means you've added massive amounts of value. I'm talking about motivational speakers value is way down here. It's very minuscule. It's, 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 it's almost, it's almost zero. A professional speaker, massive value. Motivational speakers talk too much. Professional speakers let the sales tools do the talking for them. Professional speakers get access to the bigger budgets. Professional speakers gobble up motivational speakers because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to market themselves. So I want you to look at it like this. The way you deliver your program, your brand, the way you express yourself, the, the way you move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, I've been a long time uh, entertainment veteran ever since I've been five years old. I've been a celebrity insider since I've been 18. So I'm, I, I know the entertainment industry inside and out very, very well. Now, you notice how you get a couple of breakthrough stars every single year out of thousands, hundreds of thousands to get on the bus and go to LA and get dropped off and they try to make it. You get one or two actors, new actors, male and female that break through every single year. 
music is the same exact way. You don't get 25 and 50 new artists breaking through. No, you get one, one to maybe five new artists added every single year. And I'm talking about that they got a hot song, that they figured out the way to write a song that has broad appeal. That's because they're gifted, number one. Number two, they understand how to write. A skilled writers are the best musicians and the best speakers. I want you to remember that. Remember, your best skill is not your ability to speak. And that's where, uh, that's where you're going to fall into a trap. Your best skill is your ability to write. Because if you can write, that means you can create content. If you can write, that means you're going you're gonna to be able to design educational programs and you can always deliver those. But I want you to look at it like this. See, this is one thing I know for a fact. And you got to develop the same kind of confidence in your brand. If you don't, then that means you need to go to work. See, I know we're, we're number one. The numbers, first of all, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> Forget about what I'm talking about. Ha, the numbers don't lie. And the internet never, the internet is undefeated. Let me tell you that. Memes, social media, whether or not they like your brand or don't like it, you're going to find out right away. The internet's undefeated and it doesn't lie. Especially when it comes to do they likability. They either like you or they don't like you. Now here's the beautiful part about the internet. It doesn't matter if this many people hate you because this many people could like you. It doesn't even matter if this many people like you and this many people hate you or they got negative comments to say because guess what? All I need is that many people in that area right there to dump off into my sales funnel and convert at the bottom with money. See, this is a funnel. You put a massive amount of numbers in at the top and then, the, then it trickles. The leads that convert trickle down at the bottom and that's what we're exceptionally skilled at. And that's what you need to become skilled at as a speaker. So you know what? You can't get this anywhere else. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> and this is how you need to be thinking with your brand. Watch this. I'm going to flip it on you. I'm going to give you some confidence here for those of you who are listening. Okay, while the conference coordinator wants to strut around and they have the checkbook in their hand and they're waving it at you. Oh, I got your money. Oh, oh, you almost didn't catch it. The Geico commercial. Oh, you should have been quicker. Right? While they're, while they're flaunting around the checkbook, Oh, well, guess what, Mr. Miss Conference Coordinator? You think you have somebody that can deliver these signature programs like America's leading focus expert? You think you're going to have somebody to come in and, and uh, is not going to be playing games with your staff and put the truth right up in front of their face and break them down and build them right back up at the same exact time? Delivering rapid fire Q&A, answering every single question in the house. Because when you take one of my sessions, this is what it looks like. Ooh, KTR, KTR, tell me what personality type I am. Ooh, I got a question for you. And I answer the question right there on the spot. See, it's the speakers that deliver the most value that's going to get booked again and again and again. You think HUD kept hiring me back in the day for their leadership graduation academy ceremonies for no, I mean, just over and over and over. Hey, KTR, what's going on? Hey, listen, what, we got another graduating class. We need you to come back. Hey, no problem. <laughs> HUD's, HUD's right around the corner. Go there and pick up that money. Now, understand that you can develop this kind of confidence if you build the brand the right way. I don't promise it to you. I guarantee you, you will get bookings if you build your brand the right way and you explain through your sales tools. Don't call the conference coordinator on the phone and waste their time. Motivational speakers talk too much. Professional speakers let the sales tools and the brand do all the talking for them. Illustration beats conversation. Let the conference coordinator know that you are something different right off the break. They should see that, mind you, right through your website. Your website is the central location to house all of your sales tools, your social proof. Website needs to have one call to action. Speaker video demo, three to five minutes of one of your signature programs, demonstrating your ability to speak. And your speaker info kit should have all your professional credentials listed in chronological order. It's so tight. It's so thorough. It's so strong that it answers any question that the conference coordinator is going to have about you. It's going 
to give them every reason why they should hire you. Let's talk about a mindset of the conference coordinator. What's the number one reason why they don't want to hire speakers? Because the speaker, they don't trust you. What's the number one reason why they don't trust you? Is because you're not organized. If you're flopping all over the place with your messaging, eh, let me share a story with you. I flew to Atlanta one time when I was in broke begging in desperation mode. This is a real story. See, I don't want you to have to do this kind of stuff. I had a drought as a speaker. And this was in the first seven years of my career. I flew to Atlanta for $200. I literally begged the lady to let me come. It was the worst mistake of my life. So I had a contact of mine in DC that they were doing a conference in Atlanta. It was for a small group of people. It wasn't anything really big, but they, you know, I was able to, my, my contact said, hey, listen, I know this speaker guy, da, 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 da. I really didn't know how to facilitate. At that time in my career, I wasn't a real teacher. So they flew me out there, they put me up, they paid for all my expenses. They said, look, Kevin, we don't have a budget. See, this is what they do to you when you're not ready and prepared. My website was horrible. I didn't know what a speaker info kit was back then at all. I didn't have a speaker video demo. I was not prepared. So you're gonna put yourself in a position where now the conference coordinator is gonna give you anything they want you to have instead of you setting the fee and enforcing the mark. I had no leverage. I, I, I didn't have a speaking engagement for a long time. I hit a drought. It happens when you, when you let your marketing fall apart or you're just gonna rely on somebody to hook you up with the speaking engagement. <laughs> a lot of you are still relying. You think that having an agency or a speakers bureau <laughs> or Toastmasters or National Speakers Association or a publicist or a manager or an assistant or something like that is going to book you to speaking engagements? Okay. If they're not trained like you're trained or you don't know and they don't know, you can forget it. And for those of you thinking right now, oh yeah, I've had a call, I've had some meetings with some speakers bureaus right now, KTR. They said they wanted to take me on their client roster. Okay, well, the, the, the speakers bureau has 10 to, to 20 to sometimes 30,000 speakers that they have access to. They ain't nothing but a headhunter. The speakers, how is this the speakers bureau? How is the speakers bureau looking out for your best interest? How? And they're gonna take a percentage? Oh, you're in competition with Magic Johnson, who does a speaking engagement where he feels like it, just like I do, right? You're in competition with a lot of the other speakers who don't really make themselves available, and that's why their keynote is so high. So now they're looking to get them booked because they know when, when, they, when they book me at 50000 they're going to get 20% of that. But I don't need the speakers bureau. I never have. It was a time when I thought I did. But the, the Speakers Bureau are like brokers. They're headhunters. They're not really meeting planners. All they're doing is looking to place the talent with the meeting planner. And you do have some meeting planners that will only book you if you're a member of NSA. You will have some speakers, meeting planners, who will only book you if you, if you are, have the designated Toastmasters affiliation. I'm not telling you that, that you can get booked with them or not, but this never stopped me from getting booked. You can get booked with the designation or not. Don't let these people get in your head and tell you that <clears throat> you're not gonna get any bookings. You're not getting bookings because you're not making it easy for the target buyer to work with you. And then you have a built an automated marketing machine that allows you to attract speaking engagements with consistency and predictability. Some of you don't even have a CRM. You don't even know what that is, a customer relations management tool. I'm telling you, your speaker business is dead if you don't have a CRM. Dead, 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 dead. You want to speak life into your speaker business? Then learn how to market yourself effectively. So you have something that no other speaker on planet Earth has. The bottom line, I knew when I, when I was touring regularly, I knew that the target buyers did not have a speaker like me and that's what allowed me that gave me what i call the slight edge advantage that put me in a position where my marketing and my message 
was better than anybody else that had their name in the hat for the booking. And that's the reason why I got it. Or they just added me. They said, listen, his value is so strong. There's no way we can't have him come speak at our conference. And it's a numbers game. The more conference coordinators you talk to, if you're only looking to book three to five engagements a month, then maybe you need to be talking to 50 to 100 conference coordinators every single month. Or maybe you should be talking to 25 conference coordinators every single day. Ask yourself. You shouldn't have to ask yourself the question, how am I gonna find leads? That's what we're here to help you do. But you gotta do the work. I'm not gonna hold a gun to your head and force you to do your signature programs. I'm not gonna make you redo them over, but some of you need to redo them over because the, your signature programs are weak. Send it to me. I will help you improve your signature programs so when you're talking to the target buyer, what you think, you think as a speaker, you're not gonna keep growing and you're not, not gonna have to change the language in? This is why I'm teaching you how to write world-class copy so you can change the language and improve your signature programs. You should be, you should be improving your signature programs. Don't ever be married to your marketing materials. Always be willing to improve it. Me and Austin change shit every day. Process improvement is what you should be striving for. Excuse me. The conference coordinator, ladies and gentlemen, has a mindset. They think a certain way, and you should be thinking to make them happy. Conference coordinator is like keeping your significant other happy in your relationship. <laughs> you got to do your part because the conference coordinator is going to do theirs. This is why we teach you how to have leverage. Let me, let me explain to you what happens to the conference coordinator when you have leverage. If they need it and you want it, they're going to buy it. See, you got to make them need your, these conference coordinators don't want to book speak. They need to hire speakers. What do you think? They're going to do your job? Good luck with that. The conference coordinator is skilled at doing their job. If you haven't forgotten your job as a professional speaker is to make them look number one in front of their audience. The biggest problem they're going to have with a lot of you is they don't trust you. The reason, the main reason why speakers don't get bookings is because the conference coordinator does not know who you are. Now, with about seven to 10 repetitions, when they keep seeing your email, when they keep seeing your video, when they keep seeing you post on your social media and they're following you because they're going to follow you if they're interested, huh, that's why they opted into your sales funnel. That's why they opted into your landing page. And you got to keep hammering them with consistency. This is how you're going to stay top of mind. Remember, Toma, Madison Avenue has taught us about the biggest advertising campaigns in the history of business. And they use a strategy called Toma, T-O-M-A. It stands for Top of Mind Awareness. You need to stay top of mind with the conference coordinator. The conference coordinator doesn't know you exist. That's why your ass is sitting home broke with an empty calendar with no bookings in sight. They don't know who you are. Are you gonna, are you gonna make them aware? Are you gonna tolerate the conference coordinator not knowing who you are? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not prepared to relinquish my position as the world's number one speaker coach. They all know it. All of them. You can't mistake me for them. Try to get them on the phone. Not going to happen. Try to get them to take a deep dive and, and be a real teacher and a real facilitator. Not going to happen. This is why I had to go through this. See, I was put here on planet Earth to be the world's number one speaker coach. I had to go through these thousands of repetitions. We aren't even talking about the speaking engagements I booked and got paid. We're talking about the other ones that I had to learn the valuable lessons for the first seven years. Oh, I'm talking about thousands of mistakes that I had to make. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thousands. And do you know who you are is the question. Do you? You should, because if you don't, the conference coordinator is going to have all the leverage. When you have the leverage as the speaker, they're going to have to deal with you. 
I love it when they used to call my business manager. Now I've built a celebrity brand over the years. So yeah, have I had a business manager represent me before? Yes. He's also my brother and my uh, attorney, Ward White, for the last 30 some odd years. So it's, it's, Ward used to manage that section of my business. Okay, because my brand started getting so big, I couldn't manage it. <clears throat> I've had other people on my team to manage it. You can't just call me direct. Now, with that being said, you got to let the conference coordinator know that you have all the leverage. I'm the speaker of choice, the perfect speaker for any time of the year to come in to speak to your group. And here's the reasons why. I don't have to explain that to them. They can see it right there on my website. They can see it right there in my speaker info kit. They can see all of it right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to bring in Austin Troyer for some tech talk. And we're going to open up the questions. I mean, we're going to open up the floor to anybody that has any questions. The title of this training is the mindset of the conference coordinator, meeting and event planner, how they think and what they're looking for when they want to hire a speaker. Austin, I realized I was a little turn up today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to calm down a little bit now. Now, Austin, I, I want, I want to uh, ask you some questions um, from a technical standpoint, because we see this is this question pops up a lot. I've been getting a lot of DMs and uh, even through our public figure page, and we've been getting a lot of emails, and I'm hearing this on the strategy calls, and this is coming up a lot, uh, you know, when we, when we connect with our students. But a, a lot of them, I'm going I'm to call it old school thinking, right? And old school thinking is, oh, I'm still going to do cold calling. Uh, maybe I'm going to reach out with a direct mail brochure, which is nothing wrong with doing those. I built my business with that many, many years ago. <clears throat> However, a lot of our 60% of our platform is 35 years or over. And a lot of them are stuck in old school thinking. And this is what I'm hearing, Austin. So I want you to address this. This is a problem. This is a trap that old school thinking keeps you in. So they say, oh, KTR, well, you know, I don't really like social media. I don't understand it. Right. And, and here's what I tell them, Troy. I'm like, well, I bet you any amount of money that your conference coordinator has an Instagram page. I bet you your conference coordinator has a LinkedIn account, a personal one, and they got one for the corporation, association, or business that they run. I bet you there, that some of them are on Snapchat and, and a lot of these other social media platforms. I bet you they got a YouTube account as well. So if you're not on the platforms, how are you supposed to get the visibility? So we've been talking about mindset of the conference coordinator. Tell our platform how they can make themselves look more attractive with their social media what things can they do to make themselves more attractive to connect with the conference coordinator to build that trust yeah i mean the, you just have to think like what's the main reason that they want to hire you or why should they hire you and usually you know it's going to be for your expertise if you're speaking you know in the corporate market so you got to okay. display that expertise and show that you know, you're, you're at the top 1% of your game. Okay. Well, how do you do that? Um, with social media, you have to, you have to have a combination of, you know, educating the conference coordinator with your posts, uh, but also, you know, convincing them to take action, to reach out to you, to, you know, do your main call to action, to register for your training, to check out your speaker video demo, all that stuff. So, so, Every time you post, you have to be thinking about that. How do I make myself, uh, you know, how do I, you know, one, provide value to the conference coordinator because that's the person I'm writing for. But then two, how do I, you know, convince them to buy and how do I, you know, position myself as, as an expert? So as long as you keep those in mind and the content you're putting out is helpful and, and it uh, displays your expertise, you'll be fine. Okay. <clears throat> now, what about the, uh, I'm seeing this uh, occur a lot, that the titling, how would you suggest that, like the headers and the banners to their social media? A lot of them are, a, a lot of the headers that I'm seeing for people that are, that were onboarding, they, they're just like, they're putting anything in their social media. What, what type of headings in the LinkedIn 
in the Facebook could, verbiage could you put in there that you would suggest of making their social media really stand out? So when the conference coordinator goes to their page, they know they're dealing with the expert and a professional of the first order. Yeah, so for headlines, they're really important. They're, you know, 40%, 50% of the success of your content and what you put out. That was kind of an arbitrary number, but just saying they're really important. So what, what you need to do is you need to, when you're writing a headline, every piece of content should have a headline because that's what people are going to look at first before they, you know, they go into the actual material. They need to see if it's worth, worth their time. And it, and, and then that's the piece that really piques their interest. So, you know, and most humans are headline readers. So they, you know, that's where they're going to start first. So what you need to do is you need to use the headline as a really important piece of your content and understand what you need to do is, um, explain the main benefit of what the content's going to be or you know describe what the content's going to be we use the how-to formula that's performed best for us over time so just start with how to in the headline so how to uh you know improve your your advertising performance how to uh engage your audience <clears throat> so how to and then benefit and, and what the content you're writing about is going to describe. So yeah, the headline's really important and you need to, to really describe the benefit in there. Okay. Uh, Troy, let me take a break real quick. Um, I need to get Erica in here. She has a very long question. I'm going to read this cause this is, uh, Erica. Um, let me see. Uh, the, okay. Galaxy tab, a lot of talk, Erica, I, I need you to talk to me because I'm, I'm not understanding this whole question. Okay, Eric, are you there? Wait a minute. Uh, Eric, you'll have to unmute yourself. Erica, unmute. Okay. Okay, okay, Erica. Now, let's, let's talk. Now, this is a, <laughs> let's, let's take this, let's, let me, let me, I need to read this, okay? Yes. Is it okay, is it okay to read it? Yes. Okay, so if you have a personal page and a business fan page, why do they look at your personal page and not just your business page? All right, let me, let me take that first part of the question. And then I'm going to get to the other question because it's very interesting what you have in here. Well, Erica, here, here's, here's the deal. They're going to look at all of it. I don't care if you have five Facebook pages, which I don't recommend, but if you have a, I have a public figure page, it's strictly set up for our coaching program for speaker focus. And I have a personal page. I post the same thing on all of it. Now, if you think that you're going to have some more risque content on your personal page and like the conference coordinator is not going to see that you're mistaken. Your brand is your brand is your brand. So this is where we have conflicts, Erica, and what Austin was talking about. We have conflicts in the titling to your message. We have conflicts with the benefit to your message. Who is your target audience going to? So are you starting to understand that your personal page and your business page, all of it matters? Yes, I do understand that. But what if you, okay, so I've been doing something different for years. So how much, how much do I need to, the lead off of my page. And I don't have risque. I mean, I, I, um, it's just not the same line of work, but I don't, I haven't taken a picture with a glass of alcohol cup, anything in my hand for years. Like there's certain things that I do, um, make sure of, but I do have children. So I, I, I add some pictures of my children sometimes like, you know, that's not, uh, risque but it's not all about speaking okay See? now now again i'm not saying that you listen i've had 12 stalkers okay i don't put any of my personal life up because that's the only part that i have that's private and okay. i don't do it that's just my preference if it people i see people with pictures of their family up all the time i just don't do it okay but I tell you this, you know, the, if you put up a post 
with your kids, tie it back into your brand. So now I'm going to address this other thing on here now, because okay. I'm confused about this, Erica. You said, okay, not just your business. So if you have a YouTube page with movies that have adult content, not pornographic in nature, but adult, and that's another avenue of what you have done and why that looks negatively on you and what you're speaking about, have you accomplished your goal? Well, I'm going to tell it to you like this. Risque content, whether or not it's uh, controversial, I like, I always like for content to be disruptive and thought provoking because it, it's going to make you think. So my thing is this, Erica, what's your mainstay headline and what is your main topic you're going to be speaking about? Let's start there. Okay. So you are going to live in your chosenness, which means that if you are blessed with a gift, a lot of people have a gift and don't know how to get it out because they're being practical, which we all have careers or jobs that are not always necessarily tied into the passion that we have for whatever okay. our gift is. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to help people bring that out. Okay. <clears throat> Erica, what is your mainstay headline? What is the five, five word formula that you created for your mainstay headline in module one with your signature programs? Your headlines, topics, titles, and descriptions. You should have a mainstay headline. Example, leadership strategies that magnify success. What is your five letter mainstay headline? Five letter means? No, I apologize, oh. five word. I'm sorry, five word oh. mainstay headline. Because if it's not five words, that means you need to go back and look at the formula. Download the signature program template and reorganize. And I believe when I when I posted the message in school, that's what I told you to do. You needed more structure to your signature programs. And I'm seeing a conflict, Erica, in your brand and what you want to present. Now, now, here's the question I got for you. All that stuff you told me that you wanted to do and how you wanted to help people, is that what you're talking about on your Facebook post? Is that well, what you're doing when you go live on your videos? Okay, so you're saying you see a conflict in what already? How, what I, is the conflict? I'm not seeing a distinction in your brand. What is your brand? What do you speak about? What is your main stay headline? That is the first thing. Remember, Erica, ask me the question. You know, now watch this. This is the mindset of the conference coordinator. Okay. Ask so me, the, you're a conference me, coordinator. Ask me, Kevin, what do you speak about? And watch how I answer you. Oh, I speak about overcoming adversity. No, Erica, listen, Erica, Erica, yeah. listen. I want you to ask me the question like you are the conference coordinator and I'm the speaker and watch how I answer you. Okay, no, because you asked me at first. What no, is no. your um, mainstay headline? No, that's not what the conference coordinator going to ask you. They're not going to ask you what your mainstay headline because they don't understand marketing that deep. They're going to ask you, uh, Kevin, what, what, what topics do you offer? What do you speak about? Okay. Ask me like that. Kevin, what do you speak about? I teach people leadership strategies that magnify success. I have five basic keys I share with your audiences about staying focused on leadership development. Now I'm going to ask you, Erica, what do you speak about? I help people find their passion and begin to work towards their goals and dreams. Okay. Now I like that, but it could, it could be tighter. Now, had you went back, see, listen, when I looked at the stuff that you uploaded, mm -hmm. it's not organized. It's not structured the right way. If I'm a, Erica, you got to make the, you got to make the languaging. You have to structure the language in so I can understand it if I'm a conference coordinator. When I looked at your brand, I could tell that you've been doing something for a while. And by the way, the, the PDF that you uploaded for your old version of your speaker, I mean, of your like electronic press kit, yes. the, the design was great. But if I'm hiring you to speak, your brand was all over the place. I don't know what you really speak about. Okay. Well, I have, I have topics on, on there. All of my topics are on there. Okay, but the topics need to be restructured in the format that's in the signature program template. Okay. That's, in, that's at the back end of module number one. You have right. to- Right, and I, I have no intention 
on using though I the reason why I put the other two up, the um limelight program and the pin your power, is because I had those three, but actually if it's a chosen program and someone wants to write a book, that's under there. And if someone wants to build their brand through media, that's under the same umbrella. So I don't need to use all three. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question now. Okay. Now you talked about writing a book. You talk about building a brand through media, and then you talk about uplifting people and helping them. What is your category? What are you going to focus on? You see, this is the problem that speakers have. You have a trap. You're in a trap. You're multi-talented. I get it. The conference coordinator doesn't want to hire you when you look like the Chinese food carryout store, Erica. Remember, leadership is the number one bookable and most requested topic at conferences and corporate meetings and events worldwide. Everybody just puts their different spin on leadership. But what's your niche? Let me ask you another question. See, we take a deeper dive into your niche. What's your niche? Because Erica, before you answer it, when you have a difficult time answering these questions like I used to, you don't have the answers to speak to the conference coordinator. And that's where you're going to run into an issue. Well, I'm not ready. I'm not ready yet. I know I'm that, Erica. I understand you're not ready. I'm okay. getting you ready. Yes. <clears throat> and how you get ready is you haven't taken a deep enough dive into your signature programs. You submitted me something that is not structured the right way. I'm trying to help to get you ready. Okay, so I take that information and go back to the templates and just fill that, take it from there and fill it in. Basically. Yes, and I want you to really answer those questions because when I looked at your information, you sent it back over to me like, 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 okay, I know you wanted to get my feedback, but here's my feedback. Right. What is your niche? Is it media? Is it literary writing? Is it leadership? Is it empowerment? What is it? Empowerment. Okay, then when, when I asked you what your mainstay headline was, you couldn't answer me. That means you didn't, you didn't follow the formula. There is a signature program template. And if you did, Erica, you would have submitted it to me through school and I would have saw it. So I want you to go back in to get the signature program template and download the Word document. And you're going to see, the first thing you're going to do is, what kind of speaker are you? It's and that's in module one downloads. That is in module one downloads. Absolutely. Okay, so, so let me ask you this. Yes. Um, can you, because I don't want to take up all everybody's time. Yeah, you know, no, 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 no. Forget about everybody else. This is about you right now. They're learning. They're going to hear because I'm going to get, they're going to ask me the same thing. And that's why I ain't asking no questions. If you're scared to get some feedback, maybe you're not answering questions. Erica, you're not. This is how you get better. Okay. Okay. So, yes. So I wanted you to answer the question about if I have movies on YouTube, um, how will, will that negatively affect my speaking program? If I'm showing that these are some of the accomplishments that I've had that I've made by stepping into my own chosenness. Okay. Now, okay. Watch this again. If it's a, if it's built around your brand and it's yes. not any and it's not anything that's going to take away. Okay, Erica, look, 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 let's just let's just keep it a thousand like we always do on our platform. Okay. Now, I had a sales call about two weeks ago. A guy tells me he wants to be a leadership speaker. I said, okay, cool. This guy was was talking like he had his whole speaker business set up already. Hey, look, KTR man, I don't I don't you know I got myself together already, man. I'm a leadership speaker. You know, I just need the marketing piece from you guys. Can I pay less just to get the marketing? Do you ask McDonald's that when you go and get a Big Mac and you tell them you don't want any special sauce and onions? No, you got to pay $3.33 no matter what you get on the Big Mac. Right. So when I told them that, I said, okay, you seem to be pretty confident in yourself. I like that. I said, bro, what's your social media? I went, pulled up his social media right there on the call, Erica. You know the first video I see? It's him smoking marijuana. And he's, he's, his, his whole speech while he was riding and smoking, mm -hmm. he just went on a rant about something that was so negative. Uh -huh. But yet you call yourself a leadership speaker. See, I'm not understanding. See, watch this, Erica. I'm the conference coordinator. 
and I'm booking you and you're smoking a joint. Now I'm not, I'm not knocking marijuana. I never had none before, but I probably got a contact high a couple of times, but Hey, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Uh, we're, we live in a very open-minded world right now. Medical marijuana and all these dispensaries, it's, it's legal in a lot of states. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how it looks to me if I want to hire you to speak. Right. You, you think that's a good look, Erica? What am I, I what are you gonna do? You gonna teach my you gonna teach my audience how to get high? No. Okay, so ask yourself this question about your content. Because you okay. talked about maybe having to go back in and delete some of your pictures. Erica, here's a question. If I'm a conference coordinator and I have a check in my hand for $5,000, is your content strong enough? Do you feel good enough about your content on your social media right now, on your LinkedIn, on your YouTube, on your Facebook personal page, your public figure Facebook, your Instagram, anything? Or do you feel confident about the brand that you're presenting forward? Are you embarrassed about some of the pictures that you have up there? No, I feel confident about it. Okay, then that's part of you, Erica, and that's part of your brand. I'm telling you to stand on it. All I'm telling you is, listen, I already know, Erica, and I saw that when you came into the coaching program. I know you got media experience. I know you're an author, okay? I know you've been in, been in front of the camera. I know you, you, like, you got that entertainment flair, okay? You see these billboards behind me? Yes. Okay, you see me with all these celebrities up here. I had busted my ass to get all them interviews. And I use that as part of our brand. It's, it's the track record and the history of what it is that I've done in the, in the entertainment industry. It doesn't convolute speaker focus because it's part of my history. Okay. Now, I'm just saying that if it's going, pulling a hard left and you're not feeling comfortable about that content, I'm telling you right now, some of you need to delete some of the content that you got on your social media. Eric, it may not be you, but some of you out there, you got some content. If I'm a conference coordinator, I don't want to see that shit, is all I'm saying. And people are not understanding that speakers are losing money because they're managing their social media horribly. Get it straight, Erica. Social media should be called social proof because that's really all it is. And I'm not knocking you if you got pictures of your kids up there. All I'm telling you do, if you got pictures of your beautiful children up there, turn it into a post about your topic, about your speaker topics. Your social media should only support your speaker topics and your brand. If that has something to do with your brand, then post away. If it doesn't, don't put it up there. Okay, that makes sense. Erica, I need you to write this down. Okay. A deadline is a forcing system of accountability. Okay. A deadline is a forcing system of accountability. So now I have a question for you. When are you going to go in and download the signature program template? And when are you going to take all your topics and you're going to really go through module one again when I teach you how to design your mainstay headline, the headlines, topics, titles, and descriptions? When I need you to go back in and look at that video. And I need you to follow that signature program template when are you going to have me a version of your signature programs so I can take a look at them and upload them through the school platform? And it doesn't mean that the graphics, I mean, the media has to be right. It's just the content right now, right? I don't want to see no pictures. I don't want to see any PDFs. I don't want to see nothing except for words formatted okay. exactly so how it is on that speaker, that signature program template. Okay, so I'll have it um, on school by Saturday so that, I guess by Monday, maybe you can give me, well, you're going to give me the feedback on school. I don't have to have it by. There um, it is. And listen, and listen, it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. I just need you to get the thoughts out of your head first about what you want to talk about. Now, Erica, I'm respectfully requesting that you choose a niche. Okay. You got to pick a niche because if not, you're going to be all over the place with your signature programs. If you're going to talk about empowerment, that's fine. You could talk about, watch this. You could talk about empowerment principles that build a professional image in media. Okay. You see, that's a, that's a, now that has a little bit more words than what I would prefer. I like five, 
But if you got to add a little bit more in there, and if the, if the topic's real, if, if your mainstay headline is fire, then I definitely make exceptions. Mm -hmm. and maybe you could do empowerment principles that, that uplift or empowerment principles through positive media. Okay. See, if media is going to be your thing and you're going to hang your hat on entertainment, then build a subject, build a mainstay headline around that. Mm -hmm. You can still get booked to speak around that, about around an empowerment or a leadership topic. All you're doing is putting your own spin on it. That's all you're doing. Okay. Okay? Yes. I want you to make a real run at picking a mainstay headline and creating your signature programs. Erica, it works like this. If you don't have a strong sense of direction, this is why we go over this in module one, because if you don't have a topic, titles, headlines, and descriptions, then you have no direction and you have nothing to sell. You have nothing to offer the conference coordinator. Remember, they have a mindset. They're looking for these signature programs to be organized in one central location, which is your website. So if you can put the speaker video demo up there, three to five minutes, and you can put the speaker info kit, why is it important that you do the signature program template first? And just the Word document, because you need to copy and paste all of those signature programs and the headlines, the topics, titles, and descriptions, and transfer it over to your speaker info kit. And your the number one is going to be your signature right. program page. Okay. Go back in there and look at my version of the speaker info kit, and you'll be able to see the first page is the signature program page, and it doubles as your speaker one sheet. Remember, you're going to have your four headlines. No, it's you're going to have your mainstay headline. Then you're going to have your title to your first signature program and then three bullets under each one. You have four of those on the speaker one sheet. Then you, the next page is going to be your bio. Now, Erica, in all fairness, your bio was fire. But now I need you to take the bio and pour it through the formula that I created, which is eight steps. Take your experience and put it into eight steps. I didn't see you do that either. So that's page number two of the speaker info kit. Page number four, five, six, and seven, four pages is a breakout of all four of your signature programs. This is the template that's right there in module one. Your opening paragraph, and then it's gonna say after the opening paragraph, which should be about seven or eight lines, Erica, it's gonna have after this program, you will be able to, and then it's five additional bullets to describe your signature programs. Now, in closing, Erica, because we're getting ready to wrap the call and I got to close out with Austin with a couple more things. Okay. I want you to remember this. The conference coordinator, okay, Norma has a question before we wrap. Don't forget, Austin, Norma has a question up. She's next. All right, now, all of your bullets, Erica, that describe your signature programs, mm -hmm. I want you to write this down. They should be thought-provoking and disruptive. Okay. They should be thought provoking and disruptive. Here's what it should do for the target buyer and their audience. Remember, we, we separated some things in module, module number two. We separate the target buyer, which is the conference coordinator, meeting right. and event planner, key yeah. decision maker who is directly responsible for purchasing professional speaking services. The target audience are the people who you are designing curriculum for. Those are your conference goers, conference attendees people sitting in your workshop or your seminar. Your message has got to be crafted for them. Remember, the target buyer is not going to trust you and put you, grant you permission to get in front of their target audience unless you have great headlines, topics, titles, and descriptions. Okay. And then your target market, which is what why you need to pick a niche. There's six different target markets, Erica, that you're going to take your message to. I'm going to respectfully request again that you choose one. Yeah, I'm between college and association. Okay, but I, no, I'm gonna tell, I'm association gonna, falls into a, a, um, a lot of them. The association market, Erica, is like a a la carte to all the other markets. Right. Everybody has an association. So, but when you say college, and you say you say you say co the college market, the association market is more like corporate. Okay. College is different. 
Okay, so I'll probably do college. Okay, now, now why is it that you want to do college? I'm just asking. Because I don't feel that, I mean, my message to anyone who wants to follow their passion, it, it applies, but when it comes to corporations, it has to be something that's going to help the corporation. So help their employees um, be more productive. And I believe that if you're happy, you will be more productive anywhere. If you're, if you, even if you're working and you are following your passion, you're going to be more productive because you're happier. But I don't know that um, I would be consider. I wouldn't consider myself a corporate. Okay, this is what we talk about in module number two. Really yeah, thinking about what two. market you want to go in. Now, watch yeah. this. Let me let, let me ask you a question. Because I hear you kind of talking yourself out of it, and perhaps you don't have the right perspective to talk yourself out of it. Before you do that, let's get the facts first. Okay. I'm passionate about speaking to, I'm passionate about helping people grow their speaker business. That's why I created Speaker Focus with Austin. That's the only thing I care about, Erica. The more you focus on one finite thing, the more money you're going to make. So I have a question for you. Do you feel like you want to help college kids prepare themselves for a workforce world? Is that what your message is about? I want to, yes, I want to prepare college students because we take majors that we don't really, so a lot of times what we major in is not really our passion. Okay, well, there we go. Now you're talking to me, Erica. Now you're saying that you have more of an affinity to help young adults who have not decided yet about their passion and their career. Same thing I'm sharing with you right now. If you have, now, let me ask you this. Do you have to do that more than you have to breathe? Is that what you feel like your legacy is about? Is that what you want to transfer to other people? Uh, yeah, because I'm still an educator. I'm not a, te I'm not a classroom teacher anymore, but I'm still an educator. And I still okay. have, yeah. Now, now you're talking to me. Now watch this, Erica, again. When you sent me over all of your signature programs, that needs to be reflective in programs that you're going to design to help college coordinators book you to speak so you can get to those kids. And I didn't see that. And that's what I need to see. Now, if that needs to be reflective in all of your marketing language, your heading, your titles. You need to be uh, 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 America's number one college educator. See, that's a brand. Yes. I mean, I, 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 this shit is too easy for me, Erica. <laughs> America's number one college educator. And now you're going to create me four signature programs that's going to talk to, to college conference, college coordinators, multicultural directors, people in the Greek department, multicultural department, athletic department. You can get real specific with this, Erica. Erica, did you realize that there's over 4,000 plus colleges throughout the United States and U.S. Virgin Islands? I'm not talking about the ones overseas. 4,000 plus colleges. Yes, you told me that before. So that's what I'm saying, Erica. If you're going to dominate, if you're going to get in something, get in it and learn everything about it and dominate it. Your message should strictly be about the colleges. When you start dipping your foot over there in the corporate market, which I'm not saying that you can't, but if you just focus on one market and dominate it, that's how not only that's how you make more money, but that's how you're going to be known for that one thing. Did you have any other questions or concerns? No, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I love you, Erica. And I'm look, looking forward to looking at your all of your signature programs by this Saturday. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay. Norma. Norma, can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Oh, yeah. Norma. Okay. Hey, Norma, Hi. I hear you. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Hey, what's your question? I have uh, the one question is I have an eight hundred number. Okay. That I'll be using. Um, when am I ready? Because I got the eight hundred number. I have it on my um, on my website. Your website looks great, by the way. I just reviewed it today. Your website looks amazing. Okay, great. Um, I have, but when am I ready to open up is what I want to know because I got the, the, the website is live. 
Yeah, no problem. Okay, well, guess what? That's just one, one more thing that we scratched off our to-do list. Now, I, I still have not seen a, no, I, I, I did review your signature programs, Norma. You, are, you have exceptional writing skills, just like Laurel, Erica. Uh, you, you were the, uh, the, the head editor for Upscale Magazine, uh, Creflo Dollar Ministries, and things of that nature. You do that at a very, very high level. Your writing ability is exceptional. That means you write exceptional curriculum. I love your signature programs. Now, what I have not seen, correct me if I'm wrong, is the entire speaker info kit. Have you designed that yet? Yes or no? No, I don't think so. Okay, it's not a think. It's either yes I'm, I'm or it's a no. Down. And if it's a no, if it's a no, that means you got to go back in to module one and download KTR speaker info kit, and you will see how your, your speaker info kit is supposed to be put together. Now, Norma, I saw the, uh, the article that you wrote on Prince with the quote that Prince gave you. Now you are one of the, I've never met anybody in our coaching program that has a quote uh, from Prince that he talked about the article that you wrote and he really loved it. Okay, that is a definite separation from you from everybody else. Um, so we wanna be able to take things like that and put them in, the, the purpose of the speaker info kit is to put all of your professional credentials in chronological order it gives them every okay. reason why they should hire you. Now, I know, I know you have that in different sections on your website, Norma, but if, I, if I'm a conference coordinator, now listen to this carefully. Okay. You, gotta, you gotta help me make it easy for me to book you to speak. Now, if I go print out the pages to your website right now, which is some great content, you watch how lopsided and how crooked everything prints out from the internet. It doesn't print well at all. That's why you need to have the speaker info kit in a PDF format downloadable from your website because it's going to print out on eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. The conference coordinator is going to take that into their conference committee meeting, Norma, and this is how they make the decision to book you to speak. Okay. It's not just by the website. The speaker, so, so again, with all due respect, Go back in module one. I don't have an issue with your signature programs of fire. Okay, I love them. Don't change a word. But I do not see your signature programs in a format of the speaker info kit. Go from top to bottom in my speaker info kit and start building your speaker info kit. That's the next phase that you need to go into with me. Okay. Your website looks great. Who did your website for you, by the way? Did you do it yourself? I did. Yeah, I did. Well, you did a great job. See, see, Norma. Oh, thank you. I, you're very welcome. See, I already know. I already know when you're the editor of a magazine, you already know how to work with the graphics department. You already understand marketing at a high level. You definitely understand how to make some mistakes. Austin, I sent Norma a document one time. She sends me back. She said, there's two mistakes in your document. I said, okay, thank you for helping <laughs> us get better. <laughs> <laughs> no. She's an editor, bro. She did it at the highest level. So now, Norma, now it's now all of that acumen that you have, and I've told you this many times before. Now I'm, I'm, I'm saying it to the whole world. You've got to take all of your marketing and your editing and your ability to understand how to put things together, and you've got to use that for your own benefit now. You've done it for everybody else, and you've helped them make millions of dollars. Now it's your turn. Okay. Okay. So now, right. Norma, Norma, a deadline is a forcing system of accountability. So when you're going to have my speaker info kit ready for me so I can review it? I have it today for Monday. Say it. I'm, I'm, looking looking at my, I'm looking at my schedule in my head. I'm looking at my schedule in my head. I have it for you Friday. Friday. Listen, listen, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because you know how you are, Norma. You suffer from a little bit of perfectionism. It doesn't have to be perfect when you turn it in. I just need to see that it's moving in the right direction. Because the speaker info okay. kit is going to have like 10 to 15 different versions. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at it. I'm going to say, okay, Norma, I love the design. Uh, you're missing a bullet from your speaker, uh, from one of your signature programs. I'm going to keep looking at it. Okay? That's what I want. 
Yeah, just send it to me and, and let's just keep making it better until I say, hey, Norman, this is ready to go. A con now you asked me a question. Are you ready to start talking to conference coordinators? Your website is ready. Your speaker info kit is not. And correct me if I'm wrong, I have not seen a speaker video demo from you as of yet. Is that correct? I said one, but don't look at it. <laughs> Yeah, you, not, you see, I, I, I did it for a yeah. Moment, don't look at that. Yeah, <laughs> you sent one, but you don't want me to look at it. I want to look at yeah, it. Right. So, <laughs> so that means that we have to improve our speaker video demo to get it ready to start talking to conference coordinators. And you have not finished sales cycle training, so you're not ready right. to talk to talk conference coordinators. But that's okay. This is what you have me for. So now, please get the speaker info kit complete. And then I want you to schedule a call after the speaker info kit is complete so I can go over it. I have one more question. Yes, ma'am. In the speaker info kit, mm -hmm. since I'll be speaking to different groups like like um, um, organizations, corporations, and schools and things like that, do I need a different subject for each speaker info kit? No, you do not. Again, Norma, what is your, what is your, we talked about this before. What is your market? Out of the youth market speaking to kids, out of the faith-based market speaking to churches, out of the government contracting market, out of the college market, the corporate right. and in the association market, what is your target market? My target market is all of those. No, it is not, Norma. We don't, we don't want to. <laughs> offer everything on the menu. We discussed this before. Your target market, you said, was the corporate and corporate and corporate and associations. The corporate market. Right. You you corporate did say you did say you possibly want to you have a message for the faith-based market. But when I broke down all the markets, we did a process of elimination and you told me the corporate and association market. Has that changed? No. Okay. But I did but I did some research and I found that the schools really need what I have, what I have. because there are thousands of children, um, college kids, who are committing suicide. Okay, I understand and that's that. Not in, yeah. in the public. So, what I want to do, what 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 my um, what my um, speaker focus is is that I teach empowerment blueprints at Men Broken Hearts. And I show them how to do it. And that's because people don't know what to do with the pain. And what I do is I teach them what to do with the pain. Exactly. And I take the focus off, off the person who hurt them. I take them off the sadness and focus on them and help them to develop. Okay, now, I love that. <laughs> uh, take note, everybody out there who you don't have your, your mainstay headline. and descriptions, this is the reason why you need to have it. That's a prime example. Now, Norm, I'm, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna have you understand something. Okay. Yes, a lot of people are suffering from brokenness. And the topic that you offer can help heal that brokenness. Do you wanna be a generalist or do you wanna be a specialist? Which one? A specialist, a specialist. Okay. Then, then I am respectfully requesting you do not reinvent the wheel and don't don't try to overthrow the government here. Okay, just pick one market. Okay. If you feel like you need to save them kids, then go save the kids. I you're, I'm you. telling okay. you, ladies and gentlemen, you're doing too much if you try to service every single market. One of the biggest okay. mistakes you're going to make is when, when I go to a speaker's website and they say, okay, these are my programs for the youth. This is my Christian-based program. This is my program when the government hires me. And this is the program for the colleges. And this is a pro, I, I, I used to be that guy. Okay. It's a mistake. The conference coordinator is gonna say, you're a jack of all trades, master of none. I'm confused. I don't know what your topics are. Pick one market, Norma. Okay, it was a see this kind of stuff every single day. People, people that run ads one one week they're a crypto expert. The next week they got a coaching program. The next week they're trying to tell you how to sell stuff on eBay. They don't have any sustainability 
and they, they don't have any, they can't gain traction normal because they won't get entrenched in one market. Okay. Norma, I'll do, uh, point, I'll do this, corporations. I'll do corporations. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, you want to do corporations and associations? Why, why is that? Because they pay the most? No, not because they pay the most. Are you because passionate? That's what that, why? Yes, because that's why. Where's the passion? Where's the, I want to hear some passion. You, got, I want to know that you got to do that market and that thing more than you got to breathe, Norma. Other than that, I don't want to hear about it. Tell me the reason why you want to service the corporate and association market. What is it? Because that, the corporation market is what got my attention. When people go in and kill people because they're fired or the people in, in, that, that hurt and they're not doing their best work because they, they're, they're, they're bogged down in, in problems at home. They don't know what to do with the pain. And that's what I'm focusing on, and that's what got me wanting to do this. Okay. Because All I right. have a message for them to tell them what to do with the pain. Okay, now, okay, now, now hold it right there. Let's, let's just pause that for a second. I want to help these corporations, people that work for corporations, have a personal life and a professional life. A lot of them suffer from brokenness. I want to help these corporations heal their employees. Do you understand? The, the topics that you have, and we talked about this with your signature programs, don't change one word because they're so beautifully written and they have so much value. Do you understand? You could, you could, you could run a campaign if you wanted to. You could talk to every human resource director in the country. That's your target buyer right there. You understand what I'm saying? Human resource right. directors. The head of training and development. Oh, hey, this is Norman Chappelle. Listen, I, what's your mainstay headline again, Norman? Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. What's the mainstay headline? I teach empowerment blueprints that men broken hearts. Oh, you teach empowerment blueprints that men broken hearts. Well, we got a lot of broken hearts that's in our corporation right now. Norma, tell me more. And, and then when they say that to you, that opens up the door for you to tell them all about your signature programs and the value that you offer. Am I making sense to you? Yes. To a to a HR director or the head of training and development, those two titles alone, Norma, is your target buyer. Okay. You don't need to go to the rest of the target buyers and the rest of the markets who are going to try to, some of, the tar, some of those markets are going to try to underpay you for your message. But that message right there, if you just focus on that one message and that one target buyer in that one market. Okay. I'm telling you right now, you will dominate your space, especially because okay. you're a woman of color. You will dominate your space because there ain't no other woman of color that's even thinking about doing that. It's a blue ocean. You're going to be out there all by yourself, which is market differentiation, Norma, which is a good thing. You're going to be number one like KTR. I can't wait until you get there. Okay. Okay? You got any other questions or comments? No, I think that's it. Norma, Thank please you. finish. You're very welcome, and I love you. Please finish my speaker info kit by Friday. And let me see the first draft, okay? Okay. Let's take it to another All level. Right. All right. When do you want to see the first draft? No, the first draft of the speaker info kit. Go back into module two. Look at mine. I need you to start putting your speaker info kit together. Okay. A great, a, a normal, a great thing to do. I'm giving you a little hint would be to design your speaker one sheet, which is the top page. It also doubles as your signature program page. Design that one sheet first and send it over to me so I could just check the design to make sure you're going in the right direction before you just design the whole thing. Just design okay. one sheet. Get that over to me and let me check that. Then I'm gonna say, okay, Norma, build out the rest. Okay. Okay? All right then. Please Thank don't get from the blueprint. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay. Okay, if no one else has a question or comment, uh, I'm going to uh, just ask one more question to my business partner, Austin Troyer. Uh, Troy, so getting back to the mindset of a lot of these speakers that think that social media is corny or I don't feel like I need to have one of those accounts 
can you explain to them the significance and the value of thinking like the target buyer? Why, so the question to you, Troy, is why don't people, and this is not only for our platform, why don't people study consumer behavior more? And what tips could you give them to study consumer behavior? And why is that so important? Yeah, I mean, probably because people don't even get to the point where they know who their consumer is. They don't know who they're focused on, so they don't know who to study. Um, now, you can study consumers at uh, abroad, but I think the best way to do it is first figure out who you're trying to t talk to, who you're trying to sell to, yep. and and then go figure out where they hang out. Like, um, what Facebook groups are they in? You know, what what kind of what kind of content do they read? Uh, what books are they reading? And go 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 buy the books that they're reading. There are probably a ton of books that they're reading specific to the niche that will make them better at their job. Go read it so you can see, uh, you know, you can learn how to talk to them better, learn what kind of their pain points are, and and you can get inside the heads of your specific, you know, target market. Um, and learn all the lingo, everything, even, even though they're, you know, conference coordinators can be very different in each of the different markets. And, um, depending on, you know, the pain point of it, if you're in the corporate market, depending on the pain point of, um, you know, the company, like what they're current currently experiencing, whether it's like turnover or whether it's, um, you know, like low productivity, like all those have different, those are all different niches that you have to, you know, really understand the nuances of and, and uh, do a deep dive on. So, yeah, I think the first part is like knowing who you're talking to. Once you figure that out, you can, you can really do a deep dive into how they behave and, um, you know, what sort of problems they're facing. And I think, I think it all stems from there. It becomes really easy when you know who you're talking to. Um, and then, yeah, like social media, I think, I don't think all the platforms are important for all the markets. Like most conference coordinators are probably, unless they're younger demographic, they're probably not on TikTok. They're probably not using, you know, if they're above 40, 50, they're probably maybe even 30. They're probably not using Snapchat. So uh, understanding the context of who you're trying to reach and knowing the platforms that they're on is really important. Yep. And understanding the, the context of the platform as well um, is super important. Now, Facebook, pretty much everyone's on Facebook. Maybe the, not the very, very young demographic, but most people are on Facebook. So that's a good bet, good place to start and dominate. Um, and just real, like, just understand that most of the United States is on Facebook. So you, you need to be using it. And it's, it's, not a, it's not a question of whether or not they're on there. They are. And you need to you need to ha learn how to use it to communicate to them. Otherwise, you're at a serious disadvantage to the, to your competitors, and you're not going to see, um, you know, your growth potential in speaking. Correct, correct. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. So listen, uh, you know, we bring you this content every single week. We're going to wrap up the call now, and uh, you know, we went a little over two hours a day. Great, because we have more questions being asked. You know, this platform is all about teaching you to grow your speaker business. And we didn't put this together so we can get on here and play games. You know, a lot of, a lot of the times you're going to feel uncomfortable when you are pursuing your speaker goals and it's never easy, but it does get easier as you start to develop your skill and start to learn the things that you're supposed to be paying attention to. And we have these things right there inside the modules. As you can see, uh, you know, Erica was a clear example of what happens sometimes even when you go over a module and you end up missing something. And a lot of you are doing that. You're, you're, not, you're not looking at the formula that I laid out in order to get you to structure your signature programs. But I'm telling you, that's, the, that's why we have it in module one, because it's the hardest thing to do. And, and also, when Norma... You know, you, you, you saw both examples on this call right here of two women who were, were undecided with the direction, with their message and their target market. 
Yeah. You know, quickly when you talk to me, I can help you decide because I, I, I can I can ask you to pick in and probing questions. You know, listen to what Austin said. There are so many little niches inside of each market. Remember, we do over 5,200 plus meetings in our industry every single day. At the head of those meetings is a male or female getting paid to speak. And then all COVID-19 did was create more avenues for you to speak. Online summits, Zoom calls, you know, these are still ways that you can still deliver your content and get it to the market. So I want you to understand that when you have a very specific topic, my topic is leadership. I'm in the top 20% of leadership speakers on planet earth who knows how to transfer knowledge at a very high level. It takes real facilitation skills. If you even going to think about being in the corporate and association market, you have to have strong facilitation skills. These corporations don't give a damn about motivation. They want an ROI. They want you to move the meter. And I'm the world's number one speaker coach. You don't see me talking about bonbons and snack foods on our, on our platform. All I'm talking about every single week, every day, every post, every action that I take is about helping you grow your speaker business. I don't give a damn about nothing else. And that's the fact. Okay? That's what I'm passionate about. One of my interns told me, they said, okay, TR, man, you, 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 OD, you, OD, you take, you take, you taking it over the top. Well, damn it. If you want to be successful, you must be fanatical. Are you taking your speaker business over the top? Are you taking your ability to consume knowledge about this industry? Like I just pointed out to Norma, she could go to every HR human resource director and head of training and development, and they will eat her program up like, like, like you wouldn't believe. They will be on her like white on rice because her program has so much value to helping people fix brokenness. The conference coordinator, it's a no brainer for them. Oh my God, we got to get her to come in here because she's one of the rare people that I've ever seen in my professional assessment who knows how to talk about brokenness. She's written books on it. She's written articles on it. She's an exceptionally skilled writer, which means she knows how to do what? Write curriculum. You better smarten up and listen to me. Your best skill is not your ability to run your mouth, which a lot of you still need to get better at. Your best skill is your ability to write great copy, writing curriculum. So why aren't you getting better at that? That's why you need to go back to module one and follow the signature program template so you can learn how to put together your signature programs the right way. In a language, by the way, that speaks to the target buyer in terms they understand. We will be here with more every single week. Oh, by the way, if you have any type of uh, suggestions or you have topics that you want us to cover, feel free to upload them through school. And me and Austin will create a training on them. I mean, we have stuff cooking right now. I mean, I'm talking about stuff that you couldn't even possibly imagine that's going to help you grow your speaker business. I'm very happy about the things that we're doing. It's, it's, it's very exciting to work with Austin because he pushes me every single day. This is, why, this is why we were aligned at this time in our lives for him to be the age that he is and me to be the age that I am and us to put both of our experiences together to create the most powerful platform for speaker marketing ever created in the history of business. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kevin T. Robinson. On behalf of me and my business partner, Austin Troyer, you have been experiencing some power for the last two hours and 15 plus minutes about speaker marketing and how the conference coordinator thinks. Remember, it's not about you. Study what the conference coordinator, study how they think, study what they're looking for, position and present your professional speaking services so that it works for them. Forget about you. I'm not here for me. I was put here to serve your needs to grow your speaker business. Ladies and gentlemen, and I love doing it. I'm the world's number one speaker coach. Get used to it, come to know it and understand it because it's the best thing going in the entire speaker industry. I will see you right here next time on the Speaker Focus platform with more strategies to grow your speaker business. I love you, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe and keep your head in those books and keep studying how to grow your speaker business. One, see you next week.